Hi guys, I'm off for a night out. I was hoping it was going to be two nights, but no, it's just going to be tonight. Um, I'm off to the area where it's an old camp of mine, not being there since sort of like the very, very beginning of summer. Because uh, they've been doing loads of logging in the area. I've been back to that spot a couple of times. I've not camped there though since. So it's going to be interesting to see what the area is like now that you know all the logging is done, well, it's supposed to be done. Um, so, yeah, anyway, so night out, got the hammock with a fire, cook up some nice food, some stew for a change, and uh, yeah, enjoy the woods. Anyway, catch you guys in a bit. So this is what they've been doing. Now the canopy is really opened up now. And uh, I think they're supposed to have just been taken out. Beach and uh, sycamore. Um, Yeah, I suppose I've just been taking out beach and sycamore from this wood. Um, but they've left quite a few of both in. And then, for some reason, they're taking out the uh, common ash. Don't know why. I mean, the ash, you know, the ash die back. Running out of ash trees. But this is supposed to be finished. Uh, it looks pretty messy to me. This is all supposed to be for um, conservation. They're taking out non-native trees and uh, planting more oaks in here. But what I've noticed when they've done this, you know, the same thing in the past. And they've done it in this wood further up, where they've taken out, you know, a lot of trees have thinned them out, let light to the ground, and the area just ends up becoming uh, overrun with brambles, and uh, yeah, you can't really enjoy the woods as much. But it is what it is. We don't have any choice in what, you know, the. Uh, Woodland Trust and Woodland uh, Commission do. You know, they just do what they think is uh, right for conservation in an area. And personally, I don't. I understand some of it, but yeah, I don't think they they do it necessarily well or right all the time. But we have to be grateful for them though, because if we hadn't got the Woodland Trust and the, 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 you know, these government owned areas of land and woodlands, then we wouldn't have anywhere to walk in. So, yeah, this just looks a mess. Anyway, see what the area is like closer to camp. While I'm here, um, everything seems to be uh, pretty much undisturbed so I've obviously chosen a really good spot because uh, I think it's about it's around about nearly a year now since I first came to this this uh, this spot when I first found it and then uh, yeah I've done a few things since I made this uh, bench I did uh, originally I built a lean-to here Spent a few nights here as I, with it being a lean-to and then decided to change it round to try and make it easier for filming. All the wood that was the lean-to is now that wall. Um, so yeah, a few things to do. Um, it's about half past twelve now. Um, 
so I've got about four hours, four and a bit hours of uh, workable light before I have to start using lights for, for the camera. Um, so yeah, I'm going to pretty much spend most of that time um, cutting up wood, uh, gathering wood. Um, I want to try and make like a little uh, off the ground log store as well because I plan to come back here um, later on in the year in winter so it'd be nice to if you know if I can get some uh, logs uh, that I can pre-cut up leave here uh, ready for next time that'll be great Well, after a bit of faffing round, oh, finally got the hammock set up. Finally. Oh, I say this site is a little awkward for the hammock because uh, and the tarp where it being a bit close in. Uh, ideally, you know, the trees want to be another three to five feet apart, a bit further, maybe but it's a nice little secluded little spot so you have to sort of compromise a little bit but anyway uh, my next task is going to start processing some wood ready for a fire um, actually no, I need to get some wood for the fire that's the next, next task Hopefully. Smells a bit funky. Oh, well, that piece of oak was, uh, yeah, it was wet on the inside, so it was no good. Did, however, find this bit of beach, and I've got a couple of bits of oak there. They're a little bit on the punky side, but will do. Um, I've got another piece of beach there, so. I think with what I've got should uh, should have enough. I just need to get it all chopped up now. So I'm just going to cut it into like roughly one foot long sections. And then I can split that with the axe. Oh. 
one good way to. Uh, oh, this one's a bit tougher. On the days like, uh, you know, it's getting to, uh, well, we are in the beginning of November now. In fact, it's November the 2nd. So yeah, when it gets this time of year, you have to be uh, pretty conservative of uh, what you're wanting to get done during the day. So uh, that, that is because of the short daylight hours that we're now getting. Um, so that's why I mean today all I'm doing is setting up getting firewood ready that's gonna be pretty much me about done I do want to create a little chopping board though and uh, from this uh, bit of uh, beach here that was already split I'm just gonna clean this side off here with the axe I'm gonna do that half and then turn it round and uh, see if I can't flatten that end off a little bit, it doesn't matter too much but I need a little chopping board because uh, I've got some onion to uh, prepare could have cut this a bit straighter but oh well I want to get down to the clean surface underneath So I know that's going to be pretty sterile. I sort of do. Try and make it a bit more even. Okay, so try and find the most stable part. Slightly going to be in the way, but oh well. So I've got some of this beef casserole 
uh, bursting with herbs and spices. Try and make it taste a, uh, a little bit on the better side. So what have we got? So it's a beef casserole I'm going for tonight. So there's about 400 grams of cut beef there. I've got some pork lard. That's uh, also good for, for the knife. An onion. Not seen this before, have you? And a carrot. Well, you've not seen me do this before. And some coffee. Like a muppet, I um, forgot to uh, bring out breakfast. So, oh well. It's not that important. It was an evening meal when, you, when you're out. It's gonna be more important. So I'm not gonna be here a huge amount of time in the morning. Well, I will be around, cause I'm not gonna get in the um, uh, log store built today, so I'll try and do it tomorrow. Anyway, let's try and uh, get things going. There'll be more onion here than what I actually want, but... It doesn't matter. Hey, maybe we can have stew for breakfast as well. <laughs> oh, and get off. There we go. Try not to cut all the way down. So I want these chunks of onion to be fairly small. So I'm just cutting three quart well I call it ninety-five percent the way across. So then when I come across this way gets all nicely diced. I think my voles are back. You might see them running around behind me. Easy to uh, peel an onion, peel an onion, peel a carrot. Just, uh, just scrape down it. Make sure you keep your fingers out of the way. Some people quite like the uh, the skin on a on a carrot. I personally find it a little bit too bitter. the end off. Right. I'm going to make these fairly chunky because they're going to be in the pot for quite a while. Putting my finger over the other side because the blade is pretty thick and they'll likely to just jump off. 
I'll end up with all my carrot on the floor. Instead of in the billy cam. Whoa, nearly lost one. There we go. Our last top bit for me. So the only other thing I want to do at this stage is to put a really good generous amount of fat in there because I want to fry this lot off before I uh, yeah I want to fry this off before I actually add the beef to it and then the excess fat can just wipe onto my knife after I've actually dried the knife off. Just use my sleeve. I'll just get that bit there and just rub it in. Just keep it from rusting up. So, uh, I'm going to get this fire going, this, uh, this stew is going to take quite a while to, uh, to cook up really. I'm going to cook it for a, a good couple of hours. I've got a load of uh, birch, bits of uh, fine birch bark at home from uh, some carvings that I did. So I just thought oh, I'll uh, I'll use that. Put some of them uh, wood shavings on. Right. The billy can. And I've put some fat in here already in the bottom of that. I just want a nice heat to come off that to start with. So I just want to sweat the onions down with that bit of fat that's in there. chopping board there because I'm put the there we go Nice big lump of fat's just fallen out.
Okay, so I think they're done. Now they're sort of nicely sweated down. I'm gonna move it a little bit further back. So now I'm gonna put in the beef. Get all them beefy juices in there as well. And I'm just going to try and brown it off a bit. So I'll put it over for a few minutes, well, for a few seconds anyway. Take off. Do the same again. Okay, so I've added the water in there from my uh, water bladder. Chuck that in. Give this a, a stir. Make sure there's plenty of uh, room in there for movement and everything and uh, old lid on put it over for a bit uh, just till it sort of comes up to a gentle simmer and then uh, I'll just keep it off to one side and I'll just keep stirring it so sort of like every 10 minutes or something like that so anyway looking forward to this stew Time for a coffee, I think. It's sort of boiling. There we go. Just get a little bit of ash that's floating on top out. Coffee sachets, because I haven't brought any beer with me this evening. Oh, whiskey. Some bad preparation there. Yeah, bad preparation on my part. But... This will do. Oh, that's better. Oh, that stew was lovely. Still got a bit more. I'm just keeping it uh, warm next to the fire. Just uh, suspended on the pot hanger. So, uh, yeah. It's a good night. It's, it's dropping cool. It's definitely dropping cool now. I think he said we were going to get, I think, around 7 degrees, I think, tonight out here. 
So, uh, yeah, not bad. We're supposed to have had a frost a couple of days ago, but um, yeah, I'd th I would have thought it has been quite mild this October. Not ridiculously mild, but just a little bit milder than we'd normally have it. Um, and yeah, so like eight degrees, eight nine degrees is uh, is pretty warm as well for this time of year. So it's uh, it's nice to have a frost-free night. Although it is nice waking up in the morning and uh, you know there's frost around and or even snow. So hopefully we're going to have a, a good cold winter this year because it'll be nice to get out and do plenty of um, snowy winter camps. Uh, yeah, I just it, they're enjoyable. You know the it, the scenery changes so much. So now it has such a dramatic effect on the landscape that yeah, it's um, I do like it. it. Does make travelling a little bit more difficult, though, but. And uh, I would definitely need a better pair of boots for that. But yeah, hopefully we'll um, we'll get more snow this year. I say um, I was out. I think it was oh, February like, uh, this year when we had the one bit of snow up in the Peak District. Um, and yeah, it was it was it was cool. Say cool. It was about minus. Uh, it was about minus four in the cave, and about I think it was about minus five, minus six outside the cave. Um, and yeah, I got woke up about four a.m. Um, cold down one side, and it was because a load of snow had blown in all the way to the back of the cave, and it was all building up up the side of me. It was funny. Um, but yeah. I'll be, uh, I'll be, hopefully getting out. It'd be nice to do a mix of, um, you know, some woodland winter camps with uh, some snow around, and get out into the Peak District as well, because uh, out there that's where it gets really cold um, in winter. Um, but yeah, looking forward to that all being well. So anyway. I'm going to sit here by the fire because this is my TV for tonight and I can't think of a better channel myself, TV channel, especially when you're out in the woods. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to chill by the fire, drink my coffee and yeah, I think that'll be it. It's, it's quite early though, still got plenty of time. Time is it? Uh, Ten to eight. So I've got. Yeah, I don't normally go to bed till about midnight usually. Even when I'm out here, so um, yeah, I've still got a baby. I've got another couple of hours worth of, of wood here, and I've got some other dry stuff. Um, it's a bit punky. But it'll keep going. I might just have to cut some of this up a little bit. But yeah. So this might be it for tonight. Um, I'm going to get up in the morning. I'm not going to be having any breakfast really. Um, but I want to build a, um, a little log store. If I can. And, and get some get something on, under that for next time I come here. Because I will be camping here again. Because it's a nice little spot this. Uh, especially in winter. So it'd be good to, um, you know, keep a bit of firewood away to one side, so that if it does snow, or we you know we start getting a lot of rain, then it's going to keep it um, drier at least. So um, anyway, catch you guys later, and uh, yeah, good night. Morning guys. Ooh. A bit cool this moment. <coughs> oh, just wanna uh, 
get things spread out and dried off. Because, yeah, a bit damp inside. Oh. I want to see if the, uh, there's any embers left in the fire. Well, it's heated it up. I've got this single bit piece of birch bark here that I've just torn into three, and that should. If I get that all three pieces in there. Should bring it to flame, which it has done, and it should bring it to a boil. That's what I was meant to say. <laughs> Hopefully. This is my breakfast because I didn't bring any. But I must admit. After all that stew last night, because I finished it off just before I got to it, got in bed, warm meal. Um, yeah, I don't feel that hungry, surprisingly. There was a good 400 grams of beef in there. I'm gonna get on with making this log still now. So, this post was from when I made that bed. Um, I'm gonna use that and the other one uh, for the uprights. And I'll use uh, some of the slats for the, um, for the bracings and I think for the roof as well, for the main part of the roof on it. Um, so yeah, just need to get like a good measure on on this, roughly what height I want it. About there will do. I don't need it to be too high. I want four uprights, but I want them on two at different heights. Because the back wants to be shorter than the front, so I can get a, a runoff. Something similar to that, but maybe not quite as extreme. Maybe I'll take a few inches off it. I've got around to making a new uh, axe mask, so it's a lot better than the uh, the original one that came with. This Holterford's axe, great axe this. So I'll just place it at a reasonable angle.
and I wanted to make it a bit shorter. So this is a good way of doing it as well. Yeah, that's about right, I think. That's already got a notch on it. So I just need two more at roughly that length. Oh. So I want my log store to be near where I have my fire, so I think about here is going to be good. Um, They're the two fronts, these will be the two backs. Down there, roughly. If I get one of the slats, and I can. Want to get, don't want to get the longest one though. Well, they all should be about the same size anyway. Position them about there, it's pretty wide that. And then uh, we shall crack on, just need to knock these posts in. And uh, don't need to go in too far, just enough that it's stable. Uh, stable. So, yeah, get the old X. Hoping that's not going to be too close to where the fire is. Oh, it's going to step out quite a bit. Well, let's move it a bit further over. Try and keep them level. Roughly level. It's not bad. We'll go down a couple of knocks. Okay. as far out. I'll do. I can always move the chair a bit anyway. So I think yeah. I'll be okay there. Must be a bit more in line. So there. Pretty much square this up. 
by eye, I think, but I'll, I will double check. That's okay. So that stage done. So I've sort of changed my mind back. So I said I were going to put them that way for these ones. Now I'll put those ones running across that way. And then when I come to do the roof part here, I'm going to cut one of these in half so it has a nice. Um, flat edge which I can so I put up there and then I can put a notch in the uh, ones for the roof so they'll just hang over that notch and uh, hopefully that'll I won't have to lash it down because they'll just hook on and run down to the next one that's the plan anyway well, that's the th that's the thinking Ugh. so Got a load of paracord with me. Need to buy some more paracord actually. So I don't need it too much off the ground, but it wants to be enough that you know air is going to get underneath it. And uh, it's not going to be too much in the firing line of splash back and snow depth, that sort of thing. So, uh, pull that up close to where we want it. paracord with me. Just tie it off to so that one. Yeah. 
There we go. Right, just got to do that for all four. And then I can go on to the uh, roofing ones. So I said I wanted to split one down, so I'm going to attempt to batten it to try and get a nice even split. Well, hopefully. Probably use that section to be fair. Try and clean it up a bit. So my idea for the roof and the way it's going to work is I want to put like a just like a notch so make a cut about halfway so it's got plenty to bite onto and then just very gently with the axe So, just like that, so then it'll hook on, I right, make a few of those now. Try and keep them all even. Hopefully I've got all the logs I need and that just hooks in right on there and I just uh, keep layering them up. Try to get them all a bit of a unified length but yeah it's going to be a bit awkward. Back rest, I've not tied down, I've just flattened it off and rested it on top because um, the weight of all these should keep it in place. That's the idea, anyway. Try and get them together so, like, as neatly as tightly as possible.
I go. I could maybe just put a stick on the end there. But oh, there's quite a few gaps, so I'm gonna have to a bit like a debris shelter build this up a bit just so it uh, maximizes the waterproofness of the top. So I've cut up a, a little bit more wood that I could find, it wasn't locking around. So, let's get this in here, stock it up a bit. Big piece on the end like that. Nice little haul of wood for when I'm here next. Now that's, well, it's not a huge amount, but it's something that will get me going. And uh, yeah, that's all nice and sturdy. It's not going anywhere. So that just leaves me pretty much. All I've got to do now is pack up and then head on out of here. Because uh, time's getting on now. Yeah, it's 12 o'clock, I've got to get back, uh, unpack and start getting this video edited for uh, for later on tonight. So, um, anyway, hope you've enjoyed it. Um, as you can tell, you know, I'm not going to be doing this without coming back, so I am going to come back to this spot again at some point soon. Um, I'm going to do a camp out, I think, in the Peak District again in either I think that's either might be next week or the week after and I will see um, I'm just gonna be in my tent this time I'm gonna actually camp out on the moors um, so it's gonna be more you know a day hiking and um, yeah should be good depends on the weather though and depends on whether I get a new pair of boots um, between now and then so it might be a couple of weeks We'll just have to see. Uh, but until then, hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, if it's the first time you've seen this video, uh, any of my videos, click subscribe down there um, in that bottom corner. Click the little bell that's next to it as well, and then you'll get a notification when I put the videos out. It's usually once a week. So no, unless you, you know, if you don't click that, you don't always get a notification. So uh, yes. Thanks for watching, thanks for everyone subscribed, please share, comment, like, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Hmm. Quite happy with that.